Good evening, I'm Ramundo Scott. Tonight we sit down with a group of real hell divers to find out what they think of the new war bond weapons and whether or not they're worth your hard earned super credits. This is News from the Front. It has been just over a week since the Polar Patriots war bond was released by the Ministry of Defense and hell divers across the galaxy have been putting the new weapons to the test. We had a chance to sit down with three active hell divers to get their thoughts on the new weapons and whether they have a place in your arsenal. But before we get to that, we have a word from our sponsors over at the Democratic Merch Department, where Democratic Merch Officer Chechen has been hard at work. We also want to say thank you to those hell divers who chose to support SCNN directly. This is another super thank you for the super thanks. And now, on to our round table discussion. All right, hell divers, thank you for agreeing to sit down with us tonight. Let's dive right in and start with the new AR61 tenderizer. Let's hear your thoughts and boomstick Bernard, why don't you kick things off? This gun works as good as it feels, and that is not a compliment. You can use the sickle or liberator and get more effectiveness 90% of the time. I know some folks like it. It's not for me. The tenderizer is a disgrace to Super Earth's great and grand arsenal. The Liberator AR is a better weapon than this. All hell divers get that in their first mission. Overall, it should just not exist. Well, I'm all for getting the prototypes of this thing because this thing looks pretty different from the Warbond trailer. Unfortunately, unlike some prototypes that are like over the top that had to be toned down for mass production, this looks to be the uh, the draft. On the other hand, I do love the recoil. It's basically negligible. But other than that, it's really average. Hopefully we can get the actual on release tenderizer models as otherwise that would indicate that the Warbond trailer is lying. And we all know that the trailers in the Warbonds never lie. Thanks, guys. That was some great feedback about the tenderizer. I had a chance to use it, and how this thing made it off the test assembly line is beyond me. Someone at the Ministry of Defense clearly needs to be sent for re-education. With that in mind, let's move on to the next weapon, which I suspect will be a more positive topic. The new SMG-72 Pummeler submachine gun. Lightning, let's start with you this time. The Pummeler is a great addition to our arsenal. Its consistent and medium fire rate combined with its medium damage makes it great for crowd control against the Terminated Swarm. It's able to kill the small ankle buyer bugs and hunters in one to two bullets while killing the medium sized bugs with four to five shots. It's not only great against the small bugs but bigger ones as well as it's able to stun lock even brood commanders and chargers. It's not able to kill the bigger bugs, but it is great for keeping them in place and having your buddies kill them with their bigger weapons. One of its weaknesses, though, is against the bots, as unfortunately it doesn't have a high armor penetration, so against medium enemies, it doesn't work very well. However, it does do really well with stunning the berserkers and the devastators. Ah, uh, the pummeler. It lives up to its name. It makes our undemocratic enemies tremble from super earth ballistics. Although it make you a bit hesitant considering the concussive liberator, this one has hit the sweet spot. It's able to stagger enemies, but does not make them flinch to the point where he had to aim again. While it trades a little bit of uh, less firepower compared to the Defender SMG, the sheer stopping power is just immense. Got charging berserkers going into your face? Pummel them and keep them away from our fellow Helldivers. Got four soakers incoming. You can fight them all, actually. Stun locking them with a controlled fire without being tossed like a salad. And for the damn devastators, you can now give them a taste of their own medicine, staggering them with popular fire as the rest of your teammates get, take them down. I found it a very good enemy stopper as a spatula to keep our undemocratic enemies cooking in the fires of liberty and the corrosive gases of justice. And this is my favorite weapon in the war bond. This thing is God's gift to Helldivers. I love it. 
It's what happens when you get a competent weapons developer who knows exactly what we need in the battlefield. It can stagger devs, making them easy pickings. Goes great with a ballistic shield. It's amazing for backpedaling while keeping fire on the enemies. Keeps yourself out of danger. For bugs, it keeps hunters off your back, keeps stalkers off your back. It can set your chargers if you try hard enough, which is insane. I don't know what they put in those goddamn bullets, but uh, I should try some. Ooh. Yes, I have to agree with the positive view on the pummeler. War is hell, but the pummeler at least makes it fun. When I load a clip and let her rip, I just start laughing uncontrollably. I love this weapon. Okay, let's keep moving along and turn now to the PLAS 101 Purifier. A weapon that honestly sort of confuses me. Z Heavy Armor, you're up to start this one off. Ah, the Purifier. This new addition to the Plasma Weapon Arsenal is a bit of a weird, weird thing. It feels like a stopgap, really. Purifier looks a little bit of a weird middle ground between the Plasma One Scorcher as well as the Plasma Punisher. You do get a bit more damage. However, it seems that in order for Super Earth Scientists to squeeze out more firepower, you have to do the full charging. Unfortunately, the additional firepower is not enough for the amount of charge up time that you have to do for each and every target. As whenever I use this thing, I just feel like that I'm better off with the Scorcher. I can only say to the uh, Super Earth scientists behind this weapon is take bigger risks. We hell divers dive into hell, so we don't mind if you increase a lot more firepower with the side of danger. That's the only thing I could ask, so that we can deliver more proper plasma-based justice and liberty upon our undemocratic foes. Because otherwise, this purifier feels unsatisfying to use, unfortunately. You ever been given a cupcake, and then moments later, someone wheels out a full cake, and you don't get any of it? That's sort of how this feels to me. I used it. I enjoyed it. It was fine. Then I brought out the Plas Punisher, and it just lost all its appeal. It just can't compare to it. Plas Punisher has faster shots, a bit more niche with the arcing, and it just feels better to use than the Purifier. I wouldn't say the Purifier is terrible. It still works. But as of right now, I don't see any reason to run it over other options like the Scorcher or Plas Punisher. Sounds cool, though. That's for damn sure. I've used it a f quite a few times on multiple mission types, and there's just no reason to use this over any other um, plasma-based weapon. I just find the charge-up time is too much to justify using it at all. Well, like I said, the design of this weapon confuses me. When I drop into the battlefield with bug guts and shit flying all around me, I press the trigger and what? I have to wait for it to fire? Honestly, it feels like I have enough time to go for a liberty in the time it takes to charge up. Absolutely ridiculous. Okay, one more weapon to talk about, and that's the sidearm, the Verdict. Boomstick, let's bring it back to you. The Verdict is a very solid weapon for any held ever. Love this thing. Against bugs, it can take a hunters pretty fast, and has better handling than the Senator. Senator still has a niche, though. It has much better penetration and a bit more per shot damage, but the ergonomics make it a bit less useful while the verdict is a bit more useful. It also helps when you can uh, keep one in the chamber. That one's also very helpful. I think that the verdict is an overall okay weapon. Its light armor penetration does, however, hold it back from being truly gate like the P1 Senator. I won't be using it, but I can certainly see it has applications for other divers. The verdict provides a succinct and sufficient answer. While it may not have the medium armor penetration of the Senator, the verdict provides a nice in-between solution. With more rounds, better handling, and uh, a conventional magazine, this provides a convenient answer that provides more oomph than the uh, base pistol, while providing a sleek look and a sleek style. You now have a new pistol to play around with that is not the Senator. Okay, final thoughts about the Polar Patriot Warbond. Do you think it's worth purchasing by other Helldivers, even though some of the weapons are clearly subpar? Thoughts? I think that this is a great addition to the Warbond status, and I definitely think it is worth using. 
it's actually worth purchasing since none of the weapons are exactly broken per se. But on the other end, the armor looks damn good. So if we're those into cool looking armor and some interesting guns to change things up, that's the war bond to buy for. Hell, I would have bought it just for the armor. The grenade's pretty damn good too. I love that grenade. It's I some I think I'm gonna prefer the one from Steel Veterans. I'm a big Steel Veterans guy, but hey, this one's good too. The booster is pretty nice, especially on the bug front with all those damn damn spitters and and close grazes with the bile spewers. Getting slowed down is a death sentence. Having a democratic shock into our systems to shake off that undemocratic muck that's slowing us down is a pretty good boost. As for the incendiary impact grenade, immediate fire fields of liberty is always nice to have, especially with the improved napalm mixtures that allows consistent use among all Helldiver usage. Makes it pretty good to pair with the pommeler or the liberated concussive. And there we have it, folks. Some real Helldiver's thoughts on the new War Bonds. Is it worth acquiring for your Super Destroyer's arsenal? Well, if you like nice looking armor, it certainly is. The SMG grenade and sidearms are excellent additions, even though the two included rifles are a complete letdown. But no matter what, be sure to spill oil and guts on the battlefield. That is tonight's broadcast of News from the Front. Good night, and may liberty prevail.